Hi, welcome to the garden. My name is Delphia Johnstone and at this point we're in the back garden which is the entrance to many different seating areas and different venues within the garden. Usually when people come into the garden I let them take their path through. It, it calls people in different ways. Some people go to the south, some people go to the north. It just depends how it's pulling them through. This spot here is the first spot in the morning that gets the sun. So this is the morning coffee spot and the morning meditation spot. So I have my little Buddha here with me and the gong and we can just sit here and be nice and peaceful in the morning. Well, I think gardeners are born that way. So I've probably been a gardener all my life, but we've been in the house here for 30 years. So it's been a work in progress for that length of time. So one of the highlights right now in the garden is this azalea. It's an expert azalea and the perfume from it is just amazing. I mean, the petals are starting to drop right now, but sitting on the deck in the evening, you can just smell the perfume as it wafts across the yard, which is wonderful. As you go through the garden, you will find that some plants, you're brushing them, and that's on purpose, so you become part of the garden as you go through. So you touch the garden and it touches you. There's the different fragrances and the different sounds, which is why the water runs. It just puts everything all together. And it's amazing how the sound of water will actually attract more birds as well. You know, it's, it's just so nice being outside and working in the garden, but it really also is a creation. And I really do believe you, you can paint with plants. And that's what I try to do. So if you're walking through the garden in one direction, you'll get a certain feeling. If you turn around and go back the other direction, you'll get a different feeling. So it's not so much about the garden as how people feel when they're in it. So to create something like that and have people come in and just go, oh, I just relaxed. That's wonderful. So part of it is the creative process, part of it is painting with plants, and the other part is just sharing it and have people really enjoy it. Uh, that's a potophyllum or a May apple. And the unique thing about this is the serrated edge on the leaf. Plus, if you turn it up and underneath, that's where its flowers come. So they will be bells that hang down. And so when you run out of places to plant in the ground, because there's a number of large trees here, and large tree roots mean you can't actually put plants in the ground, <laughs> you start putting them in pots and putting them on pedestals and putting them in hanging baskets and whatever you can find just to lay your things up. Uh, there's also different stages of flowering through the garden, so I don't use annuals. I rely on perennials for all of the color and the, and the shapes. Um, a lot of it leaf shapes, different colors of greens. You'll see uh, spots of black through the garden, which is designed to be a stopping point for your eye. So that's all done by design to have you move through the garden and be carried through it with the different colors and the leaf shapes. And we're just at the point right now where things are really starting to burst forth. And this hosta, when people come to the garden, they just seem to gravitate to this one. This one's called Liberty. And it just shines at night. I mean, just the different colors and the textures and the shapes. That's why plants are so interesting. 
So we've been on the Art in the Garden a number of times and it's always such a joy and a pleasure to open up the garden and have the artists come in. Um, it really is a truly magical weekend. Uh, people come in to see the art and they come in to hear the music and everyone comes in happy and relaxed and joyful. And really I'd participate in the Art in the Garden uh, whenever I'm asked. Uh, it's just really a pleasure to be part of it. Hi, I'm Chandra Stevenson. I'm a fine artist and I specialize in alcohol inks, but I've also moved into collage work. Um, I'm living in the Okanagan, but I spent most of my life in Vancouver. I think the main draw and what drew me to the alcohol inks is you really have to learn to give up control. There's no room for perfectionism. You kind of just have to sort of embrace the way the art flows and just see where it takes you. And I think for me, I found that to be really freeing because I'm, you know, a recovering perfectionist, if you will. It's been really freeing just to kind of let go and let loose and just let the art decide where it wants to go. I think for me, working in an abstract has been really interesting because it allows me to kind of see what sort of shapes I can come up with, what sort of color schemes I can use. And I really like abstract because it's kind of left to interpretation. So everyone can look at the same piece and have a different idea of what's going on or what resonates for them. And I find that to be just really interesting and different. Some of my biggest inspiration comes from, you know, like going camping or going for a nice walk in a garden. Um, and I think you can kind of see it in my pieces, but I definitely, definitely get inspiration from colors in flowers. Like I just love the bright colors that you find in nature. So being able to try and recreate that in my art is something I really strive to do. There's so much beauty in nature and, you know, it's important for everyone, whether you're an artist or not, to just go outside and enjoy it and find inspiration. Being asked to do Art in the Garden was such a cool opportunity. I haven't done anything like this before. Uh, and just being able to see my work in such a beautiful setting and be around nature, and I just find it very inspiring. Yeah, definitely makes me wanna go home and create something. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dina. This piece here is called Entity. This piece here shows that people who are from all over the world can connect and be together as one. Hi, I'm Terry Majidi. I am an artist. I do art from childhood. I love to use clay and all my artworks represent the peace, humanity, and loving each other and how we are connected to each other. This is two person sharing one body. This is unity and connection between human beings, even with the nature, we are all connected and we are all in one spirit. I think it's a beautiful place to put art in the garden because it's colorful and it's connected. We are connected to the nature. Nature is a real artist. Yeah. These two paintings present uh, how 
we suffer and there is no freedom. It's a mixed media. It's a, I use a newspaper and some uh, fishing nets. It's lots of journalists, uh, they're suffering all around the world and nobody can hear them and lots of censors. And I want to show we have to open and people can talk, people can say. I can talk and say through my artworks. I can tell all the stories through my artworks. These pieces I call a scream. The people screaming and they asking for help. Because of the war in Middle East, it's give me idea. The war, it's uh, killing people. And the human being, they are screaming and they're asking for peace, for love, for unity. The things we don't have these days. I believe uh, art is a universal language and there is a no borders. And art will connect us to each other. I'm telling all the story in my artwork and I don't prepare that much. I, when I start, it will come by itself. With art, I want to enjoy and express how I feel in that moment. And I just want to show there is always hope. Everywhere we go, there is a chance to make us happy and give us hope to go forward. I know the ocean is vast and vital a massive part untouched, and an even larger part taken for its resources and its magic. But like all water, the ocean recalls the bath of dissolution, the way waves can turn an ox into sugar, or crumbling mountains into mud, or returning us all back to the earth, gasping in the medicine of the mud. When I bathe, I too become unburied, washed off. I have seen how wounded birds tried to take flight and became taxidermied in the flesh, stuck in survival. Some days I forget that I am 1000% cellular, but those days I will forgive you still because your hands are not just the physical, your hands are the hurt that has stunted you. Your hands are the gauze when they tried to clip your wings. You call one of us an angel, the other a pig. Leave us always pacified in this animal heaven. Like a still rose dancing on cut music, fresh flower wisdom becomes obsolete. Breath suspended at the punch, so afraid to recall the other side of the impact so deleted and distorted and generalized rhyme schemes in my memory. My friend rests his head on the kitchen sink like a wolf eating his own flesh, bleeding at the art that has hunted him back. How tears of Cracker Jack and Hava Juice have untamed my tongue. I absorb the bodies that crave a safe landing. I cushion their fall with pillows of pages. I pray that every painted picture becomes wet again. Tears have watered the soil and it gives in. If I can't fill in these blanks, I can let this flesh feel out. How do you give a funeral to what you cannot name? How do I forgive to get myself out of the self-hunted head? In guilt, 
hereditary, the middle of a sandstorm, a waterfall of redemption, the bliss of understanding but not knowing. No arithmetic, no sequence, forgiveness does not mean recollection. Heal her throat so she can speak the sweet release of the grief. It may be sticky and muddy, but it is nail sharp in my teeth, so let my sound be the loudest soliloquy of exhale. I love all the colors of water, all of their convenient shapes. The faucet breaks down. The ocean does not cry. Perhaps it is always crying. Perhaps that is the same thing. Perhaps a sound so broken becomes whole. On el dimidvado, Terua, I have returned home. I have unburied from the deep to bloom again. Okay. 